Hi, welcome back. I'm certainly glad you joined me today. Today, let's do one of the most popular things that we've ever came up with in this series, and that is the little oval painting. Now this little oval is just cut out of contact paper that you can buy at your local supermarket or hardware store, whatever, just normal old contact paper. I've cut an oval out, stuck it on the canvas, and then I've covered the canvas that's exposed here with a thin, even coat of the liquid white. So it's all wet and it's ready to go. So let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me. While they're doing that, let's go on up here and get started. Today, let's have a, let's have a happy little painting, just beautiful little sky and we get a little crazy with color. I'm gonna start with a little touch of, little touch of phthalo blue on the two inch brush. Let's reach over here and get a little phthalo green add to it. What the heck? Use very little of the phthalo green though. It's so, so strong. So strong, eat up your whole world in a heartbeat. Okay, let's go right up here. Let's just have a little sky that just dances around and has fun, like so. Just, just, just dance it in like that. Just using little crissy cross strokes, let them go. But once again, very, very small amount of this green. You don't want to get too crazy with the green. There. Okay. Well, I have that color on the brush. A phthalo blue, a phthalo green. Maybe we'll have a touch of water right somewhere down here. I don't know exactly where it's going to be, wherever we feel like putting it. But right now, we can go ahead and add some color in here, and it'll be there waiting on us when we get down there. Yeah, then before I clean the brush, I'm going to go into a small amount of Prussian blue. Just tap the brush into a little, and I'm going to reach, be right back, be right back, get a little tiny amount of crimson. Prussian blue and a little bit of crimson. Then I'm going to go right down in here and just put in a little darker color under, under the base of this. A little touch of crimson and Prussian blue. There. I don't want to over blend this because it's so strong it'll eat up this light blue. Like so. There. Okay, let me wash the old brush. Just scrub it off. Shake off the excess. <laughs> and cover the cameraman. They hate me. All the cameramen around here have freckles. You can tell which ones work on this show. Camera ladies, too. I'm gonna get in trouble here. There. Now all I'm doing is just blending this together. Just blending it together. See, and already that makes a dynamite sky, beautiful little sky. Okay, now then. Let me find a one inch brush. I'm gonna go right into titanium white. Just load the brush full of titanium white. Quite a bit of paint on the brush. Just tap the brush right into the color. Okay, let's go right up here and let's build us a happy little cloud. And we'll do that by just taking the corner of the brush and just tapping. Just tapping. See, that's all you have to do, just tap in a little cloud. What could be easier and more fun? And you sort of have to make some decisions here. Where did you, where did your little clouds live? Maybe there's one, there he is. You knew there was one there. You just sort of decide where you want it and put him in. Because on this piece of canvas, you can do anything that you want to do. Absolutely anything. Look at that. And all we're doing, once again, is just tapping, just tap, tap. There. There we go. Okay. Now then, back to my, this is just a big old two inch brush and very lightly, just using little crissy cross strokes, crisscross strokes. I'm just gonna blend this and then follow the angles. See there, just blend it a little, follow the angles. Don't overwork these clouds. Don't overwork them, they'll go away and leave you. Just blend them a little tiny bit and just do like that. That's all there is to it. It's so easy to overwork them and then they're not happy anymore. Somebody sent me a letter here a while back and <laughs> said that I use the word happy too much that Everything was happy in my world, and that's true. In my world, which is right up here, 
everything is happy. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of phthalo blue, the least little touch of crimson, and a little tiny, tiny amount of phthalo green. And then a little white, so we can find out what color we have. Let's mix a little bigger pile. We're gonna use it several times. Blue, a little touch of crimson, not much. A little phthalo green. And a little white so we can tell what color we have. Ooh, that's nice. That's nice. Okay, now I want to make several different values of this or several different degrees of lightness. So I'll add just, see I have light, a little darker, and real dark, all in the same pile. Now then, tell you what, today let's use the old oval brush. And I'm going to go into that lightest color, lightest color, and just add a little color to the brush, just, just back and forth, okay? Now then, maybe there's some little hills that we back here, and I want these to be so light they almost fade right into the sky because they're far away. Very, very light. There goes our pretty little cloud we made. It's okay. As long as you learn how to make one and your time's not wasted. Okay. This one's very light. It's almost the color of the sky and very soft. Okay, with our big brush, we'll tap the base of this, just using the top of the big brush. And we're only tapping the base, just, just to create the illusion of mist, very lightly lift upward. See how that almost just fades right into nothing? Fantastic. Now then, let's go into our next darker color. It's the same color, only with less white. Load the brush the same way. Okay, maybe there's another little hill and he lives right here. See, this oval brush gives you that nice rounded effect and you can turn the brush sidewards and make different, different little effects if you want them. It's up to you, see? Makes nice little things though. Pull this straight down. Straight on down. Okay. Back to my large brush, same thing again. Just tap the base of it and lift slightly upward. You need that little bit of mist. That's the only thing you have that separates all these. So that misty area is most, most important. It's your friend, take care of it, treat it good. Treat it good. Okay, and then back to our same color. This is the darkest color we had. All right, now maybe you have to make a decision. Maybe right in here, there's another little foothill. But look at all the different planes. Let's see, one, two, three. All those different planes create the illusion of depth and distance in your painting. And that's what makes your painting stand out from other paintings. Makes your painting special. Devote a lot of time to, to looking at paintings and the ones that you like. Usually they have a lot of different planes in them. There we go. Now once again, back to our old big brush, and we tap just the base, just to create that illusion of mist. Mm. Isn't that fantastic? I knew you could do it. There. And already, we have one super little painting. And then tell you what, let's have another plane. Maybe it comes down this way. And for that, let's get a little darker. I'll use that same blue, but I'll also put in some black. I'll go right into some midnight black. So we have the same color we was using for the background with black added. This is getting closer, so it should be darker in value. Maybe, let's just take the big brush and let's just tap in a general shape here. Maybe it comes the way it does now. Right down, there it is, like so. All we're doing here is just tapping downward, just tapping downward. And begin thinking about the lay of the land. Maybe this is a nice hill and it rolls over here. See there, just like so. And maybe back here on this hill, maybe there's some happy little trees that live back here. So you can just take the corner of the big brush 
And all we're looking for right now is just some very basic little shapes. Very, very basic little shapes. There. All we're doing is putting up some little, some little arms up in the air. And if we want to, shoot, we can just go ahead here, add a little more color. And we can just fill in this whole area just by tapping. I don't know, we'll put something down here. We'll worry about it when we get there. There. I know you're saying, Bob, you've done it this time. Well, you really messed up a nice background. You may be right. Hope not. Now then, let's have some fun. Let me grab the old fan brush. I like to play with fan brushes, so I'll show you something you can do here. Let's take, we'll use some cad yellow. We'll be right back, we'll be right back. Get some sap green, a little touch of yellow ochre, a little Indian yellow, just mix them all in the brush. Okay, let's go right up here. Now just, all I'm gonna use here is just the corner of the brush and just sort of wiggle it. Just pushing upward and sort of wiggling it. Add a little touch of bright red here and there. We'll make us a nice fall picture. So you got all the orange and the reds and all those beautiful little colors. Just pushing upward with a corner of the brush. And you can make the indication of just, just hundreds and hundreds of little distant trees and bushes that live back here. And Jack Frost has been by here and touched on them. And there. See there? All kinds of happy little things, wherever you want them. Now you're gonna get a certain amount of, certain amount of green, of course, because you're touching yellow to blue. Don't worry about it. Makes it pretty. There. See, that easy, you can make all kinds of little indications without really working a great deal. This is a lazy man's way of painting. I think painting should be fun and it should be easy. And then if you wanna if you wanna pursue art, you can get into those hard forms. But this is a good way to start out and just enjoy. Okay, I'm gonna take the big brush. Shoot that little fan brush is too slow. Let's go right back here into our yellows and sap greens. Be right back, get a little more green here. Okay now then. Let's begin working on the general lay of the land. And we said this was gonna sort of go in this direction. So all I'm gonna do is begin following the lay of the land, however you want the land to flow. And in my mind, this is a hill here, a little hill. And it just flows right down the side here, just like so. And you can add all the little fall colors in there that you want. simplest and nicest, most effective ways of making little grassy areas that I've ever found. There. Now then maybe, tell you what, tell you what, in this style of painting you're always seeing things so you want to change things. Tell you what, maybe, 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 let's take some black, some brown, some little sap green into it, a little lizard crimson, Okay, let me clean my knife off. Now let's take our fan brush and load it full of paint, both sides. Just pull it right through the color. And maybe here and there, there lives, and your world, just a happy little evergreen tree out here on this hill. Uh, in your world, maybe there isn't an evergreen. If not, don't put it in, don't worry about it. I just wanna show you how, and then you make the big decision. There's one that lives down here on the hill. Let's give him a couple friends over here. And you just put as many or as few as you want. There. This is good practice though in making these little rascals. Let's go back, maybe right there. Just however many. And we have them sitting right out there on the hill. And we can take our big brush and just put a little bit of grass right down at their little foots. There. 
And see, that brings them right into the painting. Right into, they become part of the painting. Don't want them left out. Everybody wants to be part of the show. So put them little rascals in there and let them shine. You could even take and pick up a little bit of this dark color and pull it out and it makes a nice shadow automatically. Look at that, isn't that super? I knew you could do it. Now, let me find, we'll take a one inch brush and we'll go right into some of this dark color. Same, same color that we used to make those little evergreen trees. I'll add some brown to it. Van Dyke brown, what the heck. Dark sienna too. There, okay, let's go up here. Maybe there's some little trees that live. Maybe there's a whole line of them. Let's put a whole line of little trees that live right here. They just come right on down, like so. See, all we're worried about is the tops. We don't care about their bottoms yet. There we go. All we're looking for is some nice color underneath. Okay, let's go back to that fan brush. We had so much fun making all those little things with a fan brush. Let's do a couple of more. We'll use some red, some Indian yellow. Maybe these are some little trees that when the, when the frost hits them, they really get bright. So let's just use a corner of the brush, push upward, and begin working on some basic little, these are still far away, but we want some basic shapes. Don't, don't spend a lot of time worrying about individual shapes here, but begin to think about individuals. Let them shine out here in the sun. Some yellow ochre, cadmium yellow. All these bright, sparkly little colors. Just a whole line of happy little trees. And all I'm doing is using just the corner of the fan brush, pushing upward so that it, the paint comes off in that upward stroke. And practice this a little bit. You'll find you can do fantastic things just by using a little fan brush. There we go. Or you could do this with a one inch brush or two inch brush. wherever you think these little things should live, that's where they will be. Okay. Now then, we can just straighten that all up. Like so. See, and that creates another plane in your painting. Just plane after plane after plane. And I'll go right into same old dirty brush, I didn't even bother to clean it. Right into the cad yellow and the yellow ochre, like so. And because there was blue on that brush, this will turn a nice greenish color. Let's go back up here. Maybe there's a little grassy area that lives right here. All you have to do is just tap. Tap it layers, starting a farthest away and working forward, forward, forward. Like so. Like so, there they are. See there, how easy that is? Okay, then take the knife and back in here, maybe just cut just the indication of some little tree trunks. Just a few here and there. Sort of give some detail to all of that. I'm gonna take a little bit of Van Dyke Brown, a little dark sienna mixed with it. And now we have to make some big decisions here. Where's the, the bank? Maybe it comes right along in here, wherever you want it. Wherever, and it goes on up here. We don't know where it goes. Okay, now then, let's put a couple of nice big trees in here. I'll use the same old dark color with some brown in it. Maybe there lives right here, right here. Just a happy tree. And this is a pretty good sized tree. And I'm just using a one inch brush all oh, right over my beautiful little foothills. But we'll stop a tree there so it doesn't kill all of them. Like so. Find another one inch brush. Tell you what, tell you what. Let's take a little brown and a little white. We'll just use a small knife. I just wanna put the indication of it little tree trunk right in there. Little brown, then we just add a little white to it to highlight it. So 
so it'll show up. Now then, I'm gonna go right into using a one inch brush, cad yellow, yellow ochre, all my yellows and little touch of the reds and stuff, tapping this brush and tapping it and sort of sliding it at the same time. There, okay. Now then, let's put some nice highlights on this little tree. And all I'm doing is using just the corner of the brush and just barely tapping. Now form and shape are most, most important. Don't just throw this on at random. Think about the individual little limbs that live in this tree. Form and shape, form and shape. No matter how you put it on a tree, it's most important that you think how that tree's made. There, what makes it look like a tree? What well, makes it an individual? That's what you're looking to do. And we can bring a little bit of grass down here. Just like so. Just tapping. Okay, let me grab another fan brush. I'm gonna dip that into a touch of the liquid white. Go right into titanium white. And I put the liquid white in there only to thin the paint. Thin paint will stick to a thick paint. Now then, back in here, I'm gonna put a little touch, a little touch of water movement. Just a little water. Maybe there's a little, oh, a little, a little tiny waterfall right there. And it hits and splashes just a little. This is just a calm little waterfall. It's not too much to it. There we go. And with that, we can clean up all these little bottom edges, bring it all together. There, see? And there's little stones and rocks underneath there. Just barely can see, and they create little disturbances in the water. You can make them that easy. Okay, let's have some fun now. Tell you what, let's bring the camera up here so we can see the whole thing. And I'm gonna pull this oval off. Now, watch what happens. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? Now then, I like to break the borders with these ovals. They are so super the way they are, but I get crazy sometimes and like to do wild things. So I tell you what, let me find a big old two inch brush here. Let's put a big tree that lives outside the oval. We'll use that same old dark color we had, some Van Dyke brown. Now then, let's say our tree, our tree lives right about here. Big tree, strong, big old tree. There we go. Oh, I look at this son of a gun go. Now, if you're not careful, this big tree, <laughs> you can eat up your whole world with it. But I want him to go outside of the borders. Now, in your world, if you want this tree to stay inside the oval, that's perfectly all right. Anything that you want to do that makes you happy is right. All I'm doing now is putting in some dark so our light will show. And maybe that comes right on down here. And we don't know. Let's let it come right on around. Right on around. Like that. There. Okay. Now we can take a fan brush and put some brown on one side and white on the other. Whoops, and there we are. See, I got, I got white on one side, dark on the other. Okay. Let's go right up here and just draw that right through the tree. And we can put a tree trunk right in there. That easy. And however many you want. Just drop a bit. And back to our one inch brush that had the color on it. And we just tap in. See, all we're doing here is just tapping, just tapping, like so. Okay, let's go right up here. And we can lay in some highlights on this tree. Just using the corner of the brush and worry about shape and form. Shape and form are extremely important. I know you get tired of hearing me say that, but I want your tree to look the way you want it to look. So, 
really practice that. Devote a lot of practice time to creating shape in your tree. I know sometimes it looks like I just hit it random, but I really don't. Think like a tree. Go out, go out in your front yard and spend some time with a tree. Make some friends with him. Talk to him. That's all right. Neighbors will think you're crazy, but who cares? Painters, <laughs> painters are expected to be a little different. So enjoy life and enjoy nature. It's so fantastic. Sometimes we, we spend half our life overlooking some of the most beautiful things because you see them every day. You have a tendency to overlook them. I'm adding a little sap green to this color just to change its flavor. Maybe this is a different bush down here. So you just give him all kinds of little arms and but that easy. You can create some of the most fantastic little things. And a little bit of something comes right down in here. Tell you what let's do. Let's take a little little brown, little white mixed together. Maybe there's a little touch of land you can see right in here. See, let that run right on out of the painting. And it'll really make your painting so much more interesting. Like that. And you can clean that up with a little bit of grass right around just to bring it all together. And with that, I think you got one fantastic painting. I hope you've enjoyed this one from all of us here. Happy painting and God bless.